Hey there, lads and ladies. It is Petrifying Pumpkins here, and I'm back with the one-year anniversary post from Sony themselves on the PlayStation blog. Just yesterday, of course, I made a video where I detailed my concerns about the future of PS Viewer 2. It seemed appropriate to outline how I was feeling about it at the one-year anniversary, so I made that video. I had a feeling that maybe they would do something today, maybe a blog post, and uh, they've kind of done exactly that. Um, my big takeaways from yesterday's video was I felt that they needed to lean more heavily into hybrid games, and I felt like they needed to do a price cut. If not today, then like announce something today or do it in the very near future. Now, they haven't done either of those things today. They've announced a selection of games, some that we knew about already. Now they've got release dates, some that we didn't know about, like Zombie Army, VR. But they did one interesting move that I didn't see coming. Uh, some people were asking for it for a long time. I didn't think they'd ever do it, but they have pretty much confirmed they're going to be doing it. So let's just read the blog post really quickly. So uh, coming soon to PSVR 2, Zombie Army VR, Little Cities, Bigger, Wanderer, The Fragments of Face, The Wizards, Dark Times, Brotherhood, and more. So very quickly, just going to blaze through this. PSVR 2 launched one year ago, back by 40 game, blah, 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 blah. Now, following on from recent reveals of Metro Awakening and Legendary Tales, by way of last month's State of Play, we're highlighting a number of games in Sony's PlayStation blog post. New announcements, release date reveals, DLC debuts, and a game launch. Find them below, all introduced by the creators behind the games. There's so much to look forward to. Now, here's the key point, the biggest point, I think, from this whole thing. Also, we're pleased to share that we are currently testing the ability for PSVR 2 players to access additional games on PC to offer even more game variety in addition to the PSVR 2 titles available through PS5. We hope to make the support available in 2024, so stay tuned for more updates. I've seen some people confused already that they think this means that PC games are going to be somehow coming to PS5 and we can play them with a PSVR 2. That's not what that means. What they're saying is, if you have a game on PC, if you have a PSVR 2 headset, much like the Quest, you can now connect the two of them. You can play them, your PC VR games, on your PS VR 2. And I think it's a fairly good idea. I don't think it's going to sell. Like, some people seem to think this was the key, you know? This is what's going to, you know, really get PS VR 2 headsets moving. Maybe it will. I can see it maybe doubling the sales of what we have now. I don't know if it's going to, like, break it through in any meaningful way. But it is a smart decision, I think. Certainly, PS VR 2 is going to become one of the most attractive headsets on the PC space when it comes to virtual reality. They do have nice headsets over there, of course, but the price of them is kind of crazy, especially if you're looking for anything with eye tracking. The price of the PSVR 2, while we think it's too high in the console sphere, in the PC sphere, it's actually quite reasonable. And uh, it, I can see it doing well over there. So that's pretty fascinating. And it will buff the amount of PSVR 2 units in the wild. However, it's not like, you know, when you buy Half-Life Alex on Steam, Sony are getting a cut of that because it's on PSVR 2, so it's not going to make Sony anything in terms of software revenue, which makes me think that they're selling the PSVR 2 at a at a profit. Why else would they sell the PSVR 2 to PC players? Because they're not getting software revenues, so they have to be relying solely on the hardware revenues, which also tells me that maybe they could afford to cut the price at least, you know, to some degree. Um, but, I mean, I wish they went the more the price cut route rather than trying to expand it to PC and getting money that way, personally. Because now that they're selling it to PC, it might rule out a price cut because that's the only way they're going to make money on it on PC. I don't know. Uh, of course, there is talks that Sony are going to bring their own storefront to PC, so that would change that a lot. And then, you know, maybe we see Horizon, Call of the Mountain, go over to PC and all these other, you know, PSVR 2 exclusives. Maybe they move over to a PlayStation store on the PC. And then the potential of a price cut comes more, you know, more of a reality. But that's fascinating. That's like a very interesting chess move from Sony. I think it's positive. Like I said already, I don't think it's going to like make a huge difference. But um, it's definitely a positive step. And I'd love to be wrong. I'd love to be, you know, I'd love to see, you know, 10 million PSVR 2 headsets sold in 2025 on PC alone. Just to show them that there is a hunger for this. And then we can get more triple a we can maybe stop relying so much on the quest titles ports from the quest and maybe we can get the proper the half-life alex is back in action and whatnot so i'm just going to quickly go over the games as well uh, without further ado then they say the wizard dark times brotherhood is out today so the wizard's dark time brotherhood is action adventure spell casting game where you become a powerful wizard and thanks to the power of psr2 you can cast a variety of spells with your very own hands 
Uh, so they use the gesture-based mechanic, where is this? Uh, yeah, gesture-based spellcasting, a staple mechanic of the wizard franchise. So depending on how you move your hands, like you pull up a spell and, you know, you cast it that way. You can also do single-player and three-player co-op. So that might appeal uh, to a lot of people, hopefully. And it's out now today, so that's going to be interesting to see what the reviews are like when people get their hands on us. Next up then is Wanderer, which is a game we've already known about, but now we have a release date. You can see here it's out the 27th of June. Wanderer, of course, one of the one of the most highly praised PSVR 1 titles, and this game is, even though it's a port, it's, uh, it's an enhanced port. The visuals are much improved. Uh, it's just a... Uh, it's a game that you, you know, it's, I haven't played it on PS3 once, so it's a game I'm like really trying to, I'm really hoping I can get my hands on this one because it looks really good. And then, at the very end, they tease Wanderer 2, The Seas of Fortune. So, a nice little bonus there at the end. This is more like a, what I would have wanted. I think that should have been the, uh, the headline here, not a release date for Wanderer. I think, you know, hey, Wanderer 2, it's coming soon. Maybe even if it's not coming soon, just say that, you know. Next up, then you got Little Cities, Bigger. So we're delighted to bring Endless Cozy Creativity, PlayStation VR 2, Little Cities, Bigger. Um, so basically, it's the game with 18 months of dreamy update content, our most substantial slice of relaxing island crafting ever. So it's all bundled together into this release. Then you have Zombie Army VR. Are you gonna I have a vague recollection of it on flat. You know, this game was a flat franchise. Uh, on PS4, I think. Uh, but looking at it now, it just seems like another zombie shooter, another Arizona Sunshine. It's got the World War II theme going on, so maybe that differentiates it a little bit. Uh, I don't want to be too hard on this, because it does look pretty nice visually, uh, providing all of this is gameplay. Certainly some of this is gameplay. Like That looks 100% like gameplay. Um, you know, you got some rifle interaction. You can butt them away with the rifle. So, you know, maybe not the... I mean, I just find it hard to get excited for this. I just do. Let me read it, you know, let me read it. Bringing the much-loved Zombie Army franchise to VR for the first time, Zombie Army VR lets you experience the fear, thrill, and spine-chilling tension of the zombie apocalypse through the immersion of your PS4 2 headset, complete with online two-player co-op, so that, uh, you know, that adds something, I think. The thrilling campaign sees you reprise the role of a dead hunter as they fight their way across war-torn Europe, Doing battle with the zombie hordes, choose your weapon from an authentic World War II arsenal including snipers, machine guns, pistols and explosives as you lay waste to the undead and free Europe. So because I've, I've actually never played a zombie army V or, or sorry, I've never played a zombie army game so I don't actually know if this is just ported to V or if this is like a ground up V or uh, game. They say reprise the role I think. Yeah, you reprise the role of a dead hunter so... I don't know if that means uh, a port or if it's specifically a spin-off just for VR. Uh, but either way, while I'm sure this is appealing to many because these type of games do appeal to a lot of people, like Call of Duty Zombies and stuff like that, uh, me personally, it just looks like an, maybe like a genre that's kind of saturated on VR. You know, just a wave, well not wave shooters, but like just zombie shooters. First person zombie shooters they've been done, you know. I've been negative. I've been unfairly negative to the game, I know that, but uh right now I'm just a little bit dis disappointed really that this is the type of game we're getting rather than The Last of Us or Twisted Metal or Astro Boss or Kill Zone or Resistance or anything from Sony themselves. No no no, God forbid. God forbid they do that themselves. <sighs> Next then we have this Arizona Sunshine 2, which gives you a Corgi skin for your buddy. The goodest boy just got a free furry upgrade. Meet Corgi, your new fearless companion buddy, who's available in-game later today. Dive back in, face blah blah blah. But the important part here is that you guess three new horde maps, dropping one each month from March to May, and they're all going to be free, so that's nice. The final game then is Soul Covenant which is this kind of anime looking RPG. They show off a few screenshots here and uh, get a bit about us. Today we're happy to reveal new details and screenshots for our upcoming narrative action JRPG Soul Covenant that showcases one of its core mechanics, turning fallen comrades into weapons. Bunch of words there about that. Um, mm, nothing here screams amazing to me. Obviously it's just screenshots. I'd like it if it was a trailer. Trailer would be nice. 
Uh, it's coming 2024, so where is the trailer? But uh, I'm not usually a fan of the anime style anyway, so that's kind of off-putting to me straight away. And then that's kind of it. It just abruptly ends, you know? No talk about a price cut, no talk about the hybrid games that we, we've been dreaming about. And uh, I think the big takeaway here is the PC situation. Maybe that's the glimmer of hope uh, for PSVR 2 in terms of like really boosting the number of units out there, the number of people out there who are capable of, you know, triple A, proper triple A experiences that might encourage developers to maybe invest more into triple A experiences, not necessarily just the Quest mobile ports that we are kind of being drip fed right now. But I am interested to know what you think about this is this maybe i'm being way too negative i feel like i'm being too negative especially like zombie army like you know i'm done i don't want to be shitting on that game but i just it's not doing anything for me honestly to be honest none of these games announced today have done anything for me personally which is the key word maybe they've done something for you however the pc thing has done something for me it's made me think you know maybe this is the correct route to go i don't know i mean we have to wait and see how it pans out will sony do a playstation store on pc which could open up a revenue stream that makes more sense and then brings more money into PS viewer investment and whatnot and, you know, snowballs into a brighter future for us. Anyway, that is it for this video, lads and ladies. But before I end this, let me thank my YouTube members who are the following. Vincent McGloin, Mr. Tortoise, Aziki, Roy Martini, Unstable Fox, Maiki Moy, Owen Evans, DJ Sun 57 Jason Ewan, TB, Apuk DCFC, Scoby Man, The Gamecast, Brian Tam, Higher Primate 30, Piotr Geff, Nart Boglin, JL, Freps Nominal, Shapeshifter, The Amorphous Gamecast, Cheeb Eam, Amanda Clark, Germ Warfare, Horatio Ward, Funky Sloth, Love Machine 83, Infinity Lefty, 86, The Mad Hatter, Prophecy 777, Durbin Brown, Jeremiah, Roy Schwartz, Geza, Captain F. Castle, Not Saying That One, Chairface, Papa Shuffler, Jeremiah Whittlelup, J Gamer UK Empathy The Gamecast Airy TGK2 Jason Voorhees Dante Bruce Mr777 Aced Lone Wolf Vior Edify Till I Die Superfly AF Crum Pete Hawkins Gaming Reptiles and Nonsense No One Knows Deep the Pumpkin Patch Kid Movemaster Mick Esports Commentator for Hire Muzz Dead Eye Dan and Chopped Thank you very much for that support You can be a member too if you want by hitting that join button point to the join button show them where it is there it is, yeah, it's probably somewhere there. And uh, you can have your name called out too, as well as other, you know, channel exclusive perks. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, please stay nice and mm, same moist. Catch. No, same moist. Moist. There you go. There you go. Uh, goodbye.